Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So recently, you know, the game Skyforge just got released into open beta about a couple days ago. And uh, I'm here to release a video for you guys about some like tips and tricks, but more or less it's more about frequently asked questions that seems to pop up in the game a lot. So, um... The majority of the questions were taken from the live stream, you know, I asked a bunch of people in the stream, you know, what are some questions you guys have at all times, because it's a lot easier to get an FAQ from people who are actually asking the questions, you know, not me making them up. But I did make up a couple myself, and I'm here to present them for you guys as well, so I hope you guys enjoy. So, the first question would be... Um, people always ask about starter classes, you know, if someone says, oh, well, I want to get, I want to get this class later on, uh, what class should I start? If I want to play a tank later on, you know, do I have to do this or do I have to do that? Or if I'm going for a kinetic, you know, what, what class should I start? Well, essentially, the way this game works, the way this game works is it doesn't really matter what you start off with right away. So it's really up to you. You could start Cryomancer, like I did, but branch off as a Lightbinder. Vice versa, you could start Paladin and branch off as a Cryomancer. It really makes no difference. It, it, it's all the same. You're going to connect right here in the middle, and then you're going to branch out. There is only one thing that that changes between them. If you press, uh, if you press I and go to your symbols, when you completely max out a class, you unlock a class symbol. So the only thing that would different is, or differ would be, for example, Instant Ice is for a Cryomancer. Divine Intervention is for a Paladin and Shroud of Light is for a uh, Light Binder. So, and they are pretty big differences, but uh, you can always just get them again. It's not very difficult. It takes two weeks to max out a class, so it's not really that hard at all. Um, so that's pretty much the only difference. All right, next up, we've got, uh, how do you check the cap for the week? To check the cap, all you gotta do is go to I, go to your currency tab, and you can see your limits right here. And every Wednesday, uh, these will reset, so. Another question is, how do you unlock classes in this game? So to unlock a class, you need to be on your main atlas. Now, to unlock your main atlas, which is your ascension atlas, you actually cannot unlock this until you move over and grab the path of the blank. The blank would be depending on whatever class you're playing. Whether it's path of the paladin, path of the lightbinder, path of the berserker. Once you hit access to this node, then the Ascension Atlas will pop up, and the remaining skills in this tree, you cannot cons or the, the talents, you cannot consume Destruction, um, uh, Creation, or Balance. You can only start spending Sparks of Cold for a Cryomancer, or Sparks of Evolution, which is a global spark for any class. Then you have the Ascension Atlas. To unlock the class, all you need to do is right-click to go to a class. So, for example, I've got mine set on Witch. I should be getting Witch next week, or this upcoming reset, which is located here. If I wanted to switch it over to Gunner or Berserker, for example, you just right-click and hit Set Path. Or, for some reason, it's not working right now. I don't know what's happening. My, my game is a little special. Oh, you know what? I already have a Berserker. That's probably why. Uh, let's pick, uh... Let's pick, um... Oh, I have an Alchemist, too. Uh, I never thought this would be complicated. Where's, uh... There should be one... Hey, let's try this. Okay, Archer. If you right-click Archer and find Path, it'll give you the path... That's shortest to that class. So here we go. Click Kinetic, find path, boom, and you are good to go. All right. Um, next up is another very common question, which people always ask, which is, how do you group up with friends in this game? So first off, to group up with friends, I believe it's like a two to three hundred prestige difference. If you hit that that limit, uh, early game, you probably cannot party too much. End game, it, it allows for a bigger gap between like two to three thousand. For example, I'm actually 10,000 prestige at the bottom left with my proper gear on, um, and my friend is 12,000, but we can still party. And the reason for that is, here's how it works. If you look at your dungeons, here's a quick tip for you guys, you can hit your show adventure list, alright? And you can go over here and sort it by test area, solo adventure, battle, group, or region. Um, if you look at the area, so I'll click Ardos Monastery and hit here. There's difficulties that will pop up. Now, for me, I can't really keep scrolling down, but you have to be within the same difficulty range. If you're in the same difficulty range, you should have no problems queuing up. So just be like, yo, man, I gotta, you know, I've got um, Ardos Monastery with, with two Angry Pirate symbols. Can Do you have that too? They're like, yeah, man, all right, we're good to go. Um, and then it tells you the required prestige for the next step up. To actually play with a friend, this part's a little weird. All you gotta do is you click the area, 
and you hit join and you hit solo. If you join in as solo and someone's in your party, it will flag it and give them the ability to join in as well, assuming that they have the prestige requirement. Okay. Uh, then another common thing is since there's no levels in the game, how do you how do you base your character off what? And pretty much everything in your character is going to be based off prestige in this game. If you look at the bottom left, I've got a prestige gauge or, or stat which is 9,221. Uh, anything you do pretty much directly affects your prestige. That happens to do with your character. Unlocking nodes in the tree overall affects your prestige. Unlocking stats on your tree overall affects your prestige. And then going to Ascension Atlas, unlocking uh, more, more things as well. Unlocking talents or symbols uh, would increase your prestige. Going to your gear, uh, swapping out pieces of gear, unequipping them uh, would affect your prestige. Upgrading the booster slot would affect your prestige. Um, going over to your order, um, upgrading your, your order would affect your prestige. You know, there's so many different things that you can do to affect your prestige. And that is like your overall gear score. That's kind of like the way I like to explain it. So one other thing to note is, um, another big one is... A lot of people that play MMOs these days, uh, I guess the games have kind of been moving into this, which is basically, there is no healer class in Skyforge. There's only support classes. So, if memory serves, I could totally be wrong here. I didn't write this down, so I'm going to try to do it off the top of my head. There are two support classes. The two support classes would be Lightbinder. Uh, you have Lightbinder and Alchemist, which are located here. You've got Lightbinder here and Alchemist here. Uh, whoops, Alchemist is actually up here. So you've got Alchemist and Lightbinder as support classes. For your tank classes, you have Paladin and Knight. Uh, Knight is somewhere else on the tree. Knight's, I think, over here. Paladin and Knight as tank classes. For your range damage classes, I could totally get this wrong here because I don't have everything remember, uh, memorized. You have Cryomancer, Archer, and Gunner. For melee damage, Damage classes, you have Kinetic, Berserker, uh, Kinetic, Berserker, I forgot, I'm, I'm listening, oh, and Witch is also a range class, and then there's, a, there's one more, and then your two hybrid classes would be Slayer and uh, Necromancer, which is here, so I apologize, I don't have all of that memorized, um, there's one more class I'm missing, and Monk, Monk would be another melee class, <clears throat> okay, and by hybrid, I mean Necro is more sustained. Necro is, I think, the only class that actually has a sustained self-heal. And, um, what is it? Uh, Slayer has the ability to go ranged or melee, I believe. That's how it works. Now, because there's no healer class in this game, it's really interesting the way the game works. So normally, uh, when I play games, I'm not a fan of stacking raw HP because being a meat shield doesn't make you a tank. Now, of course, every game is kind of different, but for the most part... It doesn't actually give you raw mitigation, it just gives you a bigger health pool. However, in Skyforge, that's a little bit different. That's a little bit different because everything you do that has to do with mitigation via shielding, which is how the game works, you know, dashing with a talent, you can see I'll get a shield. Okay, for some reason that didn't work. Maybe it's just because I'm not in actual combat, but um, everything you do with shields has to do with your, with your maximum health. So I'm going to pop up the Ascension Atlas here, and we're going to go look at a talent. The talent is called... Uh, but this one here, right? Okay, the talent. Nope, that's not it. The talent is. I thought it was here. All right, we'll just we'll just make this simple. We will just go over to our symbol slot, which is located right over here, and there is a sliding talent here. Here we go. Clever maneuver. Using dash creates a protective barrier that absorbs damage equal to five percent of the character's maximum health. Pretty much every shield that I've seen in this game is based off your maximum health. Thus equating to the more health you have, the more damage that you can absorb with your shields that you can keep up. Also, whenever you kill mobs, they drop health orbs. Uh, and whenever you're killing a boss, anytime you knock off a health bar, it will drop a healing globe, which heals for a percentage of your maximum health. Okay, next up, there are differences in kind of like the open world aspect of Skyforge. Because it, it doesn't really have an open world aspect, but it kind of simulates that it does. Um, and the way to tell the difference between, you know, what is and what isn't, is if you look down here, and you go to show adventure list, you can see it assorted. So, anything that's group would be a five-man dungeon, anything that's battle would be PvP, anything that's solo 
would be solo adventures that you're able to solo, but you can invite people if you choose to. Um, testing area is kind of weird. It's like its own separate thing. And then region. Region would be open world. So you've got region there. And then uh, about just a few more few more tips. Uh, one thing, I don't know if this works for all classes, but this is currently a bug in the game. That's really Dan's game. So basically, if you try to dash as a cryomancer while holding right click, let me go find a mob to you, for you guys to explain it. Uh, let's just go pop into, uh, I don't know, let's click something here. Uh, sure. I've actually never, character is offline. Well, I, um, I don't know what to say about that. Well, speaking of bugs... How funny is that? Speaking of bugs. Well, that, that worked. Okay. So, there's a bug with a Cryomancer. I'm sure this has happened to you guys. Um, I don't know if it happens to other classes, but it's pretty important to know in my opinion because it is the difference between life or death in many scenarios. So, let's go over... No, 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 no one wants to talk to you. Alright, so here we go. If you hold your right click and you try to dash you will not actually dash. You will dash in place. So the difference would be this little midget dash versus... There we go. That. And and, and, and I hit the thing. So it's pretty crazy on the difference of how far you would go. Uh, you know, like if you're trying to hit a boss and you accidentally hold it and you try to dash and you don't move. So some of the last few tips I want to give you guys, which are also very important, kind of revolve around the, uh, uh, the order slash province feature. So, the most important thing in this scenario here in your order is actually your followers. Your total number of followers um, contribute to your order rank. Your order rank contributes to how high level you can level up your provinces tied with your greatness, which we'll go over shortly as well. Um, this is important because this is where you get all of your HP from. You get all of your HP from these. So you can see currently, I'm getting 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30% health bonus uh, from these along with the 100 might and 170 stamina. So this is a very important thing to work on. Now, to do that, all you have to do is go to your missions, and if you look at the right, you can see followers. Anything that gives you followers, do it. Do it. You will regret it if you don't. So anything, you just send them out, and you go do it. And if you fail, it's okay. I fail my missions at 95% all the time. I'm not really sure why. That is really, really, really important that you get set up. Now, tied with that, you have something called greatness. So if you look at your uh, if you look at your provinces, you can see how much greatness you have. Greatness is also required. Um, greatness is also required to kind of bump yourself up. So to get greatness, you have to actually go over to your ascension atlas, which you will find right over. Where is it? Also, I apologize about the orchestra that was not supposed to pop up, but I guess I guess we're gonna have an orchestra. Uh, if you just press K. And you go to the Ascension Atlas. You can actually see there are these little Rubik's Cube nodes. So I'll point one out here. Right here. This would give you a total amount of greatness. Well, it, it would contribute to it. Um, and that's exactly what it's for. Greatness goes directly into um, it's a building. So these nodes are pretty good. I would recommend picking this up, for example. Anything that's close to you. Like there's a greatness node here that I'd pick up. There's a greatness node here that I'd pick up. Um, on my way to which I believe I end up grabbing, do I get greatness? I do, I get a greatness node here that I can pick up. Um, then I'm going to get a greatness node when I'm going here and here. So these are really, really, really important nodes because they, they pretty much allow you to start scaling your health, which is, you know, mitigation essentially in this. And furthermore, the last point to bring up is uh, when you're farming these things called Oki Tablets, if you go ahead and you look at your main map, so let's go port over here, for example. Alright, you can see that I have Oki Tablets in my PvP, and I have a Ring of the Immortals inside this, this area for the Ring of the Immortals, or whatever it's called. Um, these are used for upgrading your, your provinces or your chapels. They'll pop up every two days, um, and for some reason they really like to pop up on PvP or 5-man raids. Uh, it's important that you get those out of the way. They should carry over anyway, and you'll get like two the next week if you don't get them anyway. But make sure that you farm these. If you don't understand exactly what to do with them, or you don't know what stats to allocate, then just hold them. But just make sure you do them, because they're very important to have. So that's pretty much going to conclude it. Um, I might make a part two video, and hopefully not have an orchestra in the background while it's happening. 
So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, if you have any questions at all, just feel free to drop them in the comments down below, or feel free to visit my live stream at twitch.tv slash pox, where I stream daily content pretty much every day, because that's daily, Kappa. So uh, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, yeah, if you like the video, feel free to subscribe. Have a wonderful time, everybody.